Welcome to AstroVenture, the DSLR Astrophotography Channel. Hey there, AstroVentures. Welcome back. If you're new to this astrophotography channel, my name is George, and this is the astrophotography channel for DSLR or mirrorless camera bodies, combined with the lenses we already own in a simple star tracker like the Skyguider Pro or the Star Adventurer. Now, this weekend, tonight, is New Moon Weekend, and I am planning on heading out to hopefully capture a bucket list target, and that is the Witch Head Nebula, or IC2118. What I wanted to do in this video is introduce you to one of the tools that I use in planning before going out to do my astrophotography, and that's the program Stellarium. Now, the reason why I use Stellarium, and I'm going to fire it up here, is because, and the Witch Head Target is an excellent example. I, I don't expect to be able to see it on the back of my camera because it is a reflection nebula meaning that it doesn't give off any of its own light. It's actually reflecting light from the nearby star Rigel. And I don't think that I'll actually be able to see it on the back of my camera. So I'll use the program Stellarium to see exactly what the lay of the stars will be prior to arriving in my location. And that way I know exactly how to frame up how to find my target and use the stars in the night sky because we're not using go-to mounts and how to use the stars in the night sky to be able to frame that up. So we have Stellarium going here and initially the program comes up and it will give you this generic back or foreground image. Uh, it doesn't mean anything, it's just giving you a reference. Uh, first thing I'm gonna do is go in and I'm going to update the latitude and longitude for my location where I'm going to be shooting from once that is done, I'm gonna move into my date time window and I'm going to move this. Now, the great thing is, is you can move to a future time up here. You've got the year, you've got the month and the date. Um, you can move to a future date uh, if you're planning out ahead. Uh, so what I'm gonna do now though, is I'm gonna move this to the evening shooting hour of when I'm looking to be out there. And so right now I'm looking about 2241 and I am looking for the star Rigel and over here will be the witch's head. Now, let me walk you through a few of the, the great features here. One down here at the bottom, it's telling me that I'm looking to the south. And as I move this through the timeline, you can see it jump and I can see where my target's gonna be relative to these directions. So knowing that for myself, I've got the city of Salt Lake uh, about here. I know that I'm gonna to wanna to start shooting somewhere around, looks like due south for my shooting location will be a little bit after one at night. And so I've went ahead and I've adjusted the time frame here. I can go ahead and close that out. Now, with time, you get more experience with being able to recognize the star constellations and where they're at. Um, however, you know, that comes with time and experience. If you're not real sure, down here on the lower left, you can bring up this menu and this will bring up the constellation. And again, we're working off of and I'm left click and holding to drag the screen, um, brings up Orion. Here's the star Rigel. And now I'm going to locate the Witch Head Nebula. Now to do that, I can come over here onto the left and I slide down here and there is a search window. And I can type in either IC2118 or I can type in Witch Head. Now, you'll see that it starts to auto-populate down below. And here, it's brought up the information in the upper left corner all about the witch head. It explains that it is a reflection nebula, 
gives you the magnitude that it's a magnitude of eight. And over here, you can see the bot showing where it's at. Now I'm going to use the scroll wheel of my mouse and I'm going to zoom in. And you'll start to see where the witch head is. And it's actually an upside down head. Here's the nose. Here's the chin. There's the star Rigel. Now, how I'm going to use this. One, if you're not familiar with your constellation uh, labels, in the lower left corner here, you can turn them on. There's Orion. <laughs> Lepus, I may be killing that. Um, and you can see, here is the constellation name Iridanus. Again, probably killing it. Following it all around, and this is where the witch head is, is at. Now, how I'm going to use this tool. Um, Orion's belt, pretty obvious one. Most people know of this, uh, you know, this part of the constellation. The Orion Nebula is nice and bright. It stands out. And then coming down here, the star Rigel is a really bright star. Even for most cities, you can see Rigel quite easily. And then you're going to see this star over here, Cursa. This star also shows up in the city. And how I'm going to use this information now is I know that at 1, 11.30 at night, or excuse me, after 11 o'clock, the witch head will be due south of my shooting location. So it's moved past the light of Salt Lake City. I will then identify the Orion's belt. I'll identify where the Orion Nebula is in the night sky. That will easily lead me over to Rigel. And then Cursa, as I said, shows up very easily as well. And if you look, if you were to 90 degree these, it brings you right to where the witch's head is. So when I go out tonight, after locating these identifiers, my plan will be is to put Rigel on one side of my frame, Cursa on the other edge of my frame, and then knowing that, I know that I'll be intersecting exactly where the witch's head is. Now, the other beauty of this program is as I zoom in on this, it, they have um, images of things that are overlaid into Stellarium. So it's really sweet because they're relatively accurate in size scale to each other. They may actually be accurate, I don't know. But they're relatively accurate to, to each other. So it kind of gives me an idea of what I'm looking at. And having shot the Orion Nebula before, I have an idea of the scale of the witch's head. And I can see all this nebulosity that extends quite a bit over into this area. So when I frame up, I will know that between Rigel and Cursa intersecting, I will have the, the primary meat of this nebula, but I know that I'll want to give some extra room to try and capture this extra nebula. Now, that's how I use Stellarium for planning a specific shot. One of the other things that I like to do with Stellarium is even when I don't have a specific target to go after, is just to get on here and browse around. Because as I said, Stellarium has all these nebulas that are overlaid into the system. And so I'll zoom in where nebulas are showing up. And I'll just kind of move around. And coincidentally, yesterday, in preparation for shooting this video today, I happened to stumble upon this little fuzzy spot right here. And I was like, well, that's really cool. I didn't know that that was there. And so that, you know, that'll give me a, a future target in another day. Now, another option in here, because I don't know what this is, uh, down here on the bottom, you can turn on deep sky objects. And it actually brings up the identifiers for this. And there's NGC 2071. And there's also Casper the Friendly Ghost Nebula. And so off of this information, I was easily able to do a bit of research and find out exactly what this is. So I now know 
this will one day be a future target that I go after. And then the other cool thing is, is sliding down here because I've shot the horse head and I've shot the flame nebulas. It kind of gives me a reference as to the scale size of this compared to having shot this. So I know that this is absolutely a doable target. Um, if I were to shoot with my crop camera uh, at you know 900 millimeter focal equivalent. So there you have it. Uh, there's lots of tutorials uh, on YouTube that go into much deeper detail on Stellarium. But that was just a quick little overview of why you too may want to consider getting this program onto your computer to help you in planning for uh, a given night or a given night in the future as to where everything will be. And so I hope you find that useful. Now, before we go, um, with crossing 500 subscribers, we have started a Facebook group, Astro Venture DSLR. There will be a link below. It is a private group in the sense of just keeping spamming out of it, but it is open to everyone. And if you're, you know, within this genre of doing astrophotography with your DSLR, mirrorless camera bodies, lenses you own, and a simple star tracker, consider joining it. Until next time, I wish you clear skies and uneventful nights.